Well, thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm here joined with uh, Paul Hill with Utah State University, uh, Jamie Sager from the Ohio State University. And uh, to note that um, I, I didn't really know what Pokemon was a whole lot. I just I knew that it was a cartoon show, but I didn't know how deep it went. And so if you're here with a chat, uh, please let us know if you're into Pokemon um, and uh, maybe Pokemon Go and what team color, is it team color? Yeah. I, like just say, hey, I have no idea what this is all about, but I'm interested because, you know, I have 4-H members or I have my, my own kids that is that are obsessed with Pokemon Go. Uh, but what, what our goal is today is to kind of introduce you to um, the world of Pokemon and uh, and then kind of bring you up to speed on its history but but also like how it's being used with augmented reality because um, if you haven't heard of Pokemon before and now you totally you, you are aware of it um, it's probably because of the Pokemon Go mobile app and the augmented reality features and so uh, I'm just looking at some of the comments and uh, yeah, some people, uh, Mark in North Carolina, Pokey what? Yes, that's how I was. Um, and uh, others, most people have no idea or a clue. So this is great. Um, I brought along um, our uh, Utah State University, our 4-H our, uh, uh, collegiate president uh, at Utah State University and uh, Casey Esplin, um, who happened to be a, uh, a resident expert on Pokemon. Um, he's drawing on uh, his knowledge uh, from his time spent as a youth uh, doing um, various uh, Pokemon. Uh, we're going to pull up some slides now. And uh, and Jamie uh, had some experience with Pokemon Go on her vacation and at the Ohio County Fair and has some really great um, ideas, some things that have kind of come across, um, kind of fallen on our plate. So if you have questions, uh, Mark will be monitoring the chat box and he'll interject with, uh, you know, some questions that come up uh, so that we can kind of keep you informed. But we'll, we'll kind of go through our slides and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll bring you up to speed. So just a moment. All right. Again, um, I don't have a huge background in Pokemon. Um, I knew that it was a card game, but uh, it goes deeper. So I'll introduce now, uh, turn it over to Casey Esplin, and uh, let him kind of tell you um, about the history of Pokemon. All right, thanks everybody. Um, like I said, my name is Casey Esplin. I'm a, a student up at Utah State University. I grew up with Pokemon in my life. Um, that was a really big deal when I was uh, in elementary school. All the kids were trading the cards and watching the game. And so I was kind of part of all that craze when it was really popular, and I was here and watched this transition into the Pokemon Go movement. So I'm going to start by introducing kind of what Pokemon started as to help you understand where Pokemon Go is and then how to play Pokemon Go so you can understand some of the me mechanics of the game and how you can use them as extension professionals. So Pokemon started off as a Game Boy game. Um, back in the early 90s, um, there's two versions, blue and red. Um, over 46 million copies of this game were sold. It was named by the Guinness Book of World Records as the best-selling RPG game of all time. Um, I would say if I were to go up to Utah State and pull my student body, I would bet over half of the student body there will have played these games as a kid. Um, so everyone took part in this. What happened is you played the role of a young boy who's in this world of Pokemon. Um, and basically what Pokemon are, are these animals is the best way to describe them. There's 150 of them. And each of these animals have like a different elemental power that they have. So for example, three of the better known ones here. Um, on the left, you have a lizard, a salamander that has the power of fire, so it's called a charmander. Bottom, you have a turtle with the power of water, so it's called a squirtle. And then a dinosaur with the power of like leaf, so it's called a bulbasaur. So they're an animal, they have a power, and they're named after that pretty much. There's 150 of them, and so the goal of the game was to try to catch all 150 of them. So the way you did that is you wandered around these worlds in, these, in this grass, and then all of a sudden these animals would pop up, these Pokemon, and then you would throw up, and then you would own them. It's basically the mechanics of the game. So the goal is to do that with all 150 of the Pokemon that were inside of the game. 
And so there was all these different towns, all these different areas that had different types of Pokemon. So you had to travel to different areas to find different Pokemon that you needed to catch. Now, the second goal of the game, the second thing you were trying to do was you were trying to travel in each of these towns to things called gyms, um, which you can see in this picture right here. So, so in each of these towns, you would go into the people who were training these Pokemon in these gyms. So the goal is that you'd go in and then you battle with each of these trainers where they would send out a Pokemon, you would send out a Pokemon, and you would fight each other. And each of your Pokemon keep take turns using moves on each other until they ran out of health and they would faint. And if you were able to defeat all the trainers inside of the gym, you would get one of these badges that you can see on the screen. And so the goal is that you want to try to get all eight of these badges, and that allowed you to enter into this final competition to prove you're the best in the game pretty much. So those are the two goals of the original game that we used to play. Is first, you want to tap, capture all 150 Pokemon. The second is you want to go into all the gyms and get all the badges. So now we transition into the Pokemon Go phase, or the, the things that just barely started up, opened in July 6th. Um, it was ranked as the number one fastest growing app in history that has ever been released, and also the fastest revenue generating app in history. So. It's taken the world by storm. I mean, it's only been out for about a month and a half. It already has over 130 million downloads. Um, so it's really, really popular, as I'm sure all of you have noticed. So now we're going to look into the game and how it works. So this is a screenshot from the game here. So you have the same kind of idea from the game, is that you have a little avatar. He's in the world. Um, and they actually use your actual GPS to be able to control where you're at in the world. So in order to move around this little avatar, you actually have to physically move around. So that's what the term uh, augmented reality comes in, is that you're playing a game, but you're actually using your physical location to control it. So as you're wandering around this world, your goal is to capture all 150 Pokemon, just like in the game. And so there's actually 131 right now in the game right now. And they're planning on releasing more and more Pokemon. They say they're at 10% content right now. So the game's going to grow from here. So as you're wandering around in the game, you're going to see little Pokemon spawn up. Like you can see in the little screenshot here, there's a Pokemon that's just spawned near me. So the goal is that you go and you click on this Pokemon that's, that has popped up on the game. And then it enters into... Can you go from the screen? Your time there we go. So then you enter this little cutscene here where you can see the Pokemon in front of you. And you have a little Pokeball, and your goal is you actually swipe on the screen and it flicks the Pokeball towards them. And then you try to hit them with the Pokeball. So if you ever use like that paper shooter game they used to have on the game where you try to throw the paper into the wastebasket, it's basically that game. So you swipe the Pokeball, you try to hit the Pokemon, and then you catch them. And so that is how you capture all these 150 Pokemon. As you're wandering around the world, you're trying to get them to pop up, and you throw the Pokemon at it. It's that simple. Um, the other way you can catch these Pokemon is through eggs. So you can actually get these eggs as you play the game, and you put them into an incubator. And if you notice, next to each of these eggs, there's a distance. So once you put the egg into the incubator, you have to walk the distance that's designated with that egg. And then once you do, the egg hatches and it turns into a Pokemon. So this is where a really big like fitness element has come into it, is that these kids have to walk five kilometers a day pretty much to try to hatch their eggs so they can catch these Pokemon. So it's actually been named as like one of the most unintentional fitness apps ever released. So it's, it's a pretty cool way to get these kids moving. Now the other element of the game in Pokemon Go, just like in the original games they used to have are what are called gyms. And that's this tower you can see on this shot right here. So in the game, there's three different teams you can become part of. Um, the yellow team, the blue team, and the red team. And so basically these gyms are a territory war where everybody who plays is going to be part of one of these three teams and your goal is to try to capture all of the gyms for your team. Um, there's hundreds of these in every city basically. So you're trying to wander around, find these gyms, and capture them for your team. So for example, right here, this gym is red, but I'm on team blue. So I want to take it over for my team. So what I would do is I would click on this gym and it would enter me in here where they would show the Pokemon that people on team red have put into this gym. And then I take my Pokemon that I have caught playing the game and I battle the Pokemon that are inside of there. And that's 
them by you just tap the screen and they you attack them and then they're attacking you pretty much. And then once you've done that and you've defeated all the trainers inside of the gym, the gym goes neutral. And that's how you can see it. It turns gray right now. And you choose one of your Pokemon and you upload it into that gym and by blue. Then other members of the blue team can come and put their Pokemon inside of the gym to help me defend it. So for example, right now, you can see there's three layers on this gym. That means two other people have come and put in their Pokemon as well. So now say someone from Team Red or Team Yellow wanted to come take it, they would have to defeat not only the Pokemon I put in there, but also the two other Pokemon that two other trainers have put in there as well. And then if they were able to do that, then they would take it over for their team. So that's the first reason why I want to do it is because like the pride of your team, kind of like a, a territory war thing going on. The reason, other reason why you want to do it is for uh, getting coins. So for every Pokemon that you have in a gym, once a day you can claim 10 coins for every Pokemon you have in a gym anywhere. So you could just go around all day trying to get as many Pokemon in a gym as possible by taking them over, and then you can claim these coins. And these games, the Pokeballs are incense where you can attract more Pokemon to you, all sorts of these different items. Um, so that's the other reason why people want these gyms is so they can buy these different items. Now the third element of the game that's important for you to know about wanting to use as an extension are what are called Pokestops. And they're seen right here on the screen as like these big round orbs. These are tagged with specific locations in the game. Um, so it can be... Uh, <laughs> It can be like on areas of like cultural or historical importance, like churches or locations in colleges, historical landmarks, that each get these little Pokestops, or several of them do. And you have to be within like 50 feet of them to activate them. Like if you notice on that leftmost screenshot up in the corner, you can see like these little squares. Um, those represent Pokestops that you're too far away from to be able to activate them. But these circle ones means you're close enough. So this middle screenshot here shows what happens if you click on one of them. They show the picture of the landmark with the name of it. And you can also type in a little description of that landmark as well. And so players in the game, when they're close enough, they click on it. They can spin that little icon. And then I can see a little potion there they use on their injured Pokemon after they've been inside of a gym. They can heal their Pokemon. All that kind of stuff comes by visiting these Pokestops. So they'll want to go to these as often as possible to collect these items, and they refresh every five minutes. So for example, one person could park here in this leftmost screenshot. They could just sit here and just collect from all three of these Pokestops every five minutes. So they want to sit there and just get as much stuff as possible. Now, uh, just to quickly interject, uh, how are these locations selected, Casey? Were they selected because these you know, these, this organization paid for it, or how did that happen? Good question. So this actually is all based on a game that this company used to put out about five or ten years ago. And the players in that game actually submitted these locations, and they used that same data to have these locations. However, they knew there wasn't quite enough, so they basically just use an automatic generator using Google Maps to just choose areas of importance to have these Pokestops. However, now that Pokemon Go has become so popular, they've given the option for companies, businesses, locations to submit a request to become either a Pokestop or a gym. And so that's a really valuable tool that you should be aware of for like a maker space or an extension office that you could go in to their website for Niantic is the name of the company and you can actually request to have your area be made a Pokestop or a gym. And so that'll be, you'll see why that's really relevant here in a minute as we talk about what you can do, at, another thing you can do at these Pokestops. So the way that, uh, one of the things you can do at these different Pokestops here is you can install what are called a lure. So on this left screen, you can see an arrow pointing to the menu. It's a little Pokeball symbol. So this is what you can do if you have the download of the game. You can click on this little Pokeball symbol here and it pulls up this menu and you can enter into the shop. Those are things you can buy. You can buy one for 100 Poke coins, or you can buy eight of them for 680. Then what you do is if you go into one of these Pokestops, you can see that little white oval at the top of the symbol there. You can click on that and you can choose a Pokestop module that you can install into that site has a little picture of that module and you can see it's like raining flower petals looks like or something like that confetti 
And so when a Pokestop has this lure installed, they attract Pokemon, I think it's two or three times as fast as they would normally. So this is really important to the people playing this game because they want to try to capture all these Pokemon, so they want to be in an area where they're being attracted really quickly. So you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you can see a Pokestop that has a lure module installed. And any player in the game can see these things set up. Um, and so, for example, in this screenshot here, um, that up there you can see how there's a Pokestop that has the little confetti coming out of it. And that Pokestop was about a quarter mile away from where I was. So people can see that you have a lure set up like a quarter mile to half a mile away. So it's free advertising to want people to come to that physical location where you have that lure set up. So just like a little case study to show you kind of what happens, here's those three Pokestops again. Here's the picture of that physical location on Dixie State uh, University campus. And then I went ahead and installed the lure on all three of those Pokestops. So you can see now the amount of Pokemon has quadrupled. This was in about five or ten minutes. And also the amount of people quadrupled. It was empty when I got there. And during the 15 minutes or so I had that lure set up, eight people just came over and sat there because they knew that a whole bunch of Pokemon were going to be popping up there. So literally there is just by setting up these lures wherever you want them. So now um, for you as extension agents, if you want to do this, um, again, eight lure modules. Each of these lure modules lasts for 30 minutes. It costs 680 coins. So that means in order to buy that, you would have to put in 68 Pokemon into a gym. And so I'm sure most of you probably aren't really interested in doing that. <laughs> and so the other option is they figured out this is a great way to make money. So you can actually just buy these Poke coins straight up from either the Google Play Store or from the Apple App Store. And so, for example, just to show you how this works, if you spend $20, you'll get 24 lure modules. And 24 lure modules is approximately 12 hours of advertising. So 20 bucks for 12 hours of attracting people to a location. So it's it's a pretty cheap way to get people to come to wherever you're at. And so we actually had an example from the Washington County Fair that Paul is going to talk about how he uses lure module. All right, yeah. So uh, we looked, our, our fairgrounds is, unlike in Ohio, um, where they have a lot of pokey stops, uh, we had one near our fairgrounds. And it wasn't even like in our, in our county fair, it was nearby. And so um, it was kind of near uh, this area where they take care of the horses. And, uh, but it was the only one we had to work with and we couldn't submit one fast enough and get it approved. And so we set up a soldering, a learn to solder station and it was a fundraiser for our teen uh, leadership council. And so they were charging $5 to teach youth how to solder. And so as you can see there, uh, we have some of our teen leaders working with youth. Uh, in order to attract people to that, um, to that module, or to, the, to our station, we set up a lure module and we were doing that like every half hour to get people there. And then as, as we lured them there, they would, uh, to get a Pokemon, we would say, hey, uh, go check out our uh, learn to solder station. If you're into Pokemon, of course you'd want to learn to solder <laughs> and, uh, and, and get involved in 4-H. And so uh, we, had, we had a lot of kids uh, get involved, as you can see in the pictures there, um, all because we, we, we use uh, this augmented reality technology to, uh, to, to bring them uh, to the county fair. So, and they, and they saw, I mean, they saw this uh, from, you know, a little over a mile away. And so they could see, oh, hey, there's something going down. We better get there so we can get our Pokemon. Some ideas um, that we, you know, we kind of thought about this and we, and we want to get some of your feedback as well, but uh, just some different Pokemon Go's. We started uh, collaborating with our youth and seeing like, what would get kids who are interested in Pokemon interested in 4-H? Um, we do a big, every year we do a big um, celebration on May the 4th. It's kind of like uh, May the 4th be with you, Star Wars Day. And uh, we, we attract a lot of people to our office. And so uh, we'd like, we thought, hey, we could do a lure at our office to attract people there. We do them at the fair as activities. Um, we thought uh, doing some competitions, uh, healthy living uh, with 4-H, uh, doing some egg hatching, um, getting people walking around. Um, to boost their experience points. Uh, Jamie was at the Detroit Maker Fair and at the Ohio State Fair, and so uh, we'll have her talk a little bit about uh, some competitions, some things that she noticed uh, there, so. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, we did have a question in the chat before I take over. 
Um, someone asked if we know if there's a cost to become a Pokestop or a gym. So in your guys' research for FAIR, did you find that out or do you know? As far as I know, it's free. Um, the preliminary research I did, there wasn't encouraging these to be locations of historical or cultural importance. Um, and so perhaps if you're advertising strictly from a business perspective, they might charge. But when I was looking at doing one at a, like a historical location, like I was looking at the fairgrounds, um, they weren't charging for those ones. However, I'm not sure if they might have changed that. I know they've recently been kind of changing those things around. And so. do you know how long it takes to make it a poke stop after you send in the request? I'm not sure. I'm sure they're getting flooded right now. They only opened up the option to be able to submit a request about two or three weeks ago. And so I'm sure right now they're just getting swamped with everything. So I have no idea how long it is, how long it would take to hear back. Do you, I think, uh, do you have to contact them via email or through the app if you want to request a spot? You need to go through their website. You can't even do it through the app. You have to go through their company's website. And do, yeah. do the public locations require permissions? You know, that's another one I'm not quite sure about. Yeah, I know that there are some businesses, uh, if you if you Google, you know, Pokemon um, Go, you can see like some businesses, there's articles about their business being safe because they happen to be a Pokestop and people started uh, showing up and a lot of them had no clue. Like there's a story about an ice cream shop uh, that was really struggling and, and it was on this part of town where no one really went anymore. And this just drove tons of traffic and now business is booming and they've had to hire people. Um, and then other people have complained about people loitering outside uh, their, uh, you know, their, their stores and they want people to leave. And so uh, I know Dixie State where we're located in St. George, Utah, they, they like the fact that all these people are showing up, uh, you know, all summer long and, you know, coming visiting campus. But um, uh, thanks for the, yeah, put up a link uh, to submit the request to Niantic. That was Molly. So thank you for posting that, Molly. Uh, so yeah, there's a link there in the chat. Uh, if you want to submit your location, uh, go for it. We don't know at this point how long it will take. Um, again, like Casey said, it's, they're probably flooded with, with requests right now. So, And I think that um, if businesses end up with a Pokestop or a gym and they don't want it there, then I have heard of um, them requesting to have it taken down too. So that yeah. ha happens occasionally too. Um, we have, have one just uh, down the street actually um, at our local Catholic church. And um, there were so many people um, roaming through the cemetery there that they requested that it be taken out. I say the, the hospital here in St. George, they've spawned it with two gyms and about seven Pokestops around the hospital. And so they were having people walking around the hospital like crazy playing Pokemon Go. So they've had to submit a request to have all their things pulled out from there. So they're not having people wander around the hospital. So, yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about some examples um, that I've come across this summer. It's hard to believe that uh, this has only been out for a couple months because, <laughs> I don't know, it feels like uh, it's been out for a year with the number of people that are playing um, and how far it's come, really, with, uh, you know, things that they've been adding to the app. I mean, they are constantly updating this app. My 12-year-old daughter plays. I don't play, but my 12-year-old does. And so she'll tell me every time there's an update and what's going on and what's changed with the app. Um, and so it's been really interesting to see how they're trying to keep up with the level of people that are, are playing it and keep it interesting um, and safe to play at the same time. Um, so I did go to the Maker Fair in Detroit last month, and uh, one of the busiest tables at the start of the fair layout uh, was this table that was just a plain table and had this sign outside of it that said event check-in and people were just going up to it and saying what is this what is this how can i play um so it was actually um uh <laughs> i guess you could say alert to get people to check out this yumicon event uh which is um like a cosplay for anime people you know if you're really into anime and you like cosplay you go to this yumicon event um and it's going to be in detroit in the fall so they were trying to advertise their event and get some interest in it by setting up this pokemon go event at the maker fair um and, and if you don't know what a anime or cosplay are then this event is not for you <laughs> so but people who play pokemon know so that's very good marketing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's that's the right crowd to be tapping into. 
<laughs> um, so, so they were offering a free badge, which I'm guessing is free registration uh, for this Yumacon um, event if you could catch one of the three highest CP, which is combat power. My 12 year old told me that yesterday, uh, combat power Pokemon. So if you captured, okay, uh, Casey, what would be a really high CP Pokemon that you could capture? Yeah, so the CP ranges anywhere from 10 to 3,000. Um, so usually Pokemon that spawn or, you know, uh, at beginning levels, they're usually between 10 and 50. Once you get up higher, like anything above 400, 500 is considered pretty awesome. So you're wanting those ones pretty bad. Yeah. So you'd want to capture one of those. So you had until 5 o'clock, um, the first day of the Maker Fair, uh, to capture one of these three highest three cp pokemons and then if you did you would um, either screenshot it and tweet it out with their hashtag um, or post it to instagram with the hashtag and then that way they would see it or you could take it to their um to their booth um okay can we go back to the uh, there we go sweet shop okay so this um this slide uh shows some um promotions that were going on downtown where i live in tip city ohio we have a cupcake shop that's also our candy shop downtown, right beside the toy store, which is perfect placement. Um, and the toy store and the cupcake shop were doing this promotion over the summer um, for kids where they could bring in their um, Pokemon Go app on their phone and show them what level they were on and then they would get a discount um, from their purchases based on what level they were on. If they wanted a t-shirt from the cupcake shop or the toy store, um, they just had to post a picture of them, like a screenshot of them catching a Pokemon outside of the stores, and they would get a free t-shirt after they posted it with the hashtag. So it was really good marketing, um, genius even to tap into, into that because they already had um, kids downtown all summer long playing this game. Um, and there were people actually using it. So I went online to see, okay, were people actually posting stuff with, with the hashtags? And yeah, they were. So I found a couple examples and, and put those up there too. All right, let's go. Let's move on. Um, so the last example I wanted to share was from our Ohio State Fair uh, here in Ohio and Columbus. And they had um, a map this year that they posted online. And a lot of the news outlets in Columbus shared this so that people would know um, that they were promoting the use of Pokemon Go at the state fair. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I did some digging and I couldn't find out, but I don't know if they placed any of the Pokestops or the gyms themselves, or if they were already located on the state fairgrounds in Columbus. Um, but they did share out this map. And if you go to the next um, slide, you can see where a lot of the poke stops are. There's only a couple on the beginning. So, um, you know, our state fair in Ohio is pretty big. <laughs> the, the fairgrounds is massive. Um, and so there is a lot of opportunities for poke stops and gems. And you can see that on here. And they actually do have some of them grouped together and themed. Um, I went into a forum to see if people were using it and were talking about it. And a lot of people are saying this is so cool how they have a lot of the Pokestops themed and set up around different aspects and areas of the fairgrounds. Um, so I guess that was a cool thing. Like I said, I don't play, so I don't really know, but I do know that people were excited about it and they were using it. Um, and that's really about it. They did have a Pokestop index. It's on the next slide. Um, and maybe Casey can explain what the benefit would be to laying out where all the uh, Pokestops are. I mean, it does show you, like it gives you a picture of what it is and what it looks like but i don't know casey can you explain what the benefit would be to like having this index with the map yeah i think it would just give them a landmark of what they were trying to look for and what they needed to be close to in order to access that specific pokestop yeah we had a question in the chat earlier about someone asked if uh if it's possible to like go somewhere and see where all of the pokestops are in your area and unfortunately there isn't you kind of have to drive around get out look um, where all these are and so this does a really good service of saying look these are all the ones that are in this area and they've done screenshots and everything um, to, to kind of help um, people see that there is stuff going on because you, you can't find you don't know where the pokey stops are until you actually go to that physical location so again without planning it they've done a really good job of getting people moving um, so and, and that's one thing that I've seen this uh, this this year is wondering why at you know midnight are people adults <laughs> full-grown uh, men and women um most of the kids obey the curfew in our in our city but uh 
they're out at you know midnight, uh, three a.m. walking around, getting some exercise, catching some Pokemon. One of the first times that I heard about the game, um, I had a friend on Facebook post that there was a huge crowd in front of our courthouse building in, in Troy, in our county, um, and she didn't know why. And she's like, what is going on at the courthouse? Um, and then there was this whole conversation about, oh, there's a, there's a gym at the, uh, at the courthouse. What's a gym? What are you talking about? So um, that was one of the first times that I had even heard about the app. And it got the conversation going about who was there because there were people of all ages. And they're like, there's kids out here. What is going on? Um, and they did have like the, the police come out and check it out. But then they started playing and downloading the app and having a great time with it. So um, it's a great example of, you know, how to bring people together, I guess. Um, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any pictures or slides for it, but you know, Paul mentioned that I had some experiences with it on vacation um, over the summer. We went to Washington, D.C. as a family, and um, the amount of gyms and Pokestops and rare Pokemon around the National Mall was just incredible, and they had some really great Ranger-led programs, too, um, and they tried to teach the kids um, the appropriateness of using the app, you know, when to play the games versus when not to play um, Pokemon Go when you're, you know, at the National Monuments and things like that. And they did a really great job of tapping into the craziness and also trying to help, you know, the kids learn how to play it appropriately too. And so I thought that was a great thing. And um, you should have seen my 12 year old's eyes light up when we pulled into DC the first night we got there and her Pokemon Go screen was just lit up with all kinds of stuff and she couldn't wait to get out there and play. So um, I thought it was a great example of how the national parks are even getting into it. Yeah, um, again, you know, we, we thought about some ideas for Pokemon 4-H camps. Uh, there, it's a great way to promote healthy living through being active. Um, you know, citizenship, drawing, you know, drawing attention to historical, historical landmarks and uh, learning the stories behind the landmarks. Uh, we, in Utah, we have a lot of, um, you know, settled by pioneers. And so there's a lot of um, pioneer monuments that are Pokestops. And so um, these are great places to go and learn if you're going to be there in the physical location. And so it'd be fun to do kind of this little Pokestop tour where you're walking around town in your downtown area. Um, another comment uh, talked about agritourism. Another great, um, you know, if you have an agritourism or agritainment farm, uh, a great way. Get those pokey. You, you're you're wanting to do anything you can to get people to go through your corn maze and uh, visit your farm. And so, uh, a, a great way to submit for pokey pokey um, a pokey stop or a gym. Um, but uh, I'm interested. I'm going to go check out our agritainment farm uh, locally here and see if there's one down there because right now is the perfect time. And so if, if you don't have one, um, definitely you want to submit um, and hopefully by, you know, next season you can get that. But I mean, you'll see a lot more traffic there as long as, you know, this doesn't die out. But again, like Casey mentioned, uh, this Niantic who makes the app, they've only released about 10% of the content. And so obviously, you know, once you catch, you know, catch them all 150 Pokemon, um, you know, you're going to keep continue to play. And so they have to provide that incentive. Yeah. Um, just to, and just to understand why it's at 10%. Uh, right now, I, when, when I showed those pictures previously of Pokemon, that was the first generation. That was between like the years of like 95 to 98. They really released a second uh, generation of Pokemon that was from like 98 to 2002 where they released another 150. Then they came out with another generation and another generation. Right now they're about to come out with generation 7. So they're almost at 1,000 Pokemon that these kids have played games for and that they know. And so Niantic is planning on hopefully building up to release all of these Pokemon. So I don't think this game's going to go anywhere anytime soon. I think this augmented reality type of a game is going to be the type of game we're going to see a lot more of in the future. Yeah, and not just Pokemon, but I mean, you think of any genre that your your youth that you're into. Um, you know, we've got a lot of millennial users because this is something that they use that they played as as youth. So there's it's very nostalgic for um, for people like Casey, not like me, but, <laughs> but Casey. So uh, if, if there is, uh, I'll. Uh, I'll pull up the chat. If there's any other questions, uh, like Lisa, she said, you know, Harry Potter, Star Wars. Um, uh, I will, I will plug uh, Molly. Uh, she she wrote an article um, recently about ten ways to use Pokemon in extension uh, in extension education. And so you look at the chat box, check that out. Uh, we we referenced that um, in looking for content and kind of doing a lit lit review uh, for this presentation. Um, but, uh, Paul, there was a question in Q and a about the address to request a stop. I, I don't, I, I think someone may have put that in chat, but 
What was was that right? Was that yeah? It is. It is in the is in the chat. Um, if you go to okay. Pokemon Go um, dot Niantic Labs dot com, uh, if you just Google um, you know request some you know request a Pokestop, um, it'll it'll take you to that um, to that link. But Molly Molly shared that um, in the chat box. So thank you, Molly. Appreciate that. I'm curious about are there any off limits sort of locations? I you know I saw like a news story recently where there were some kids in a graveyard there were some family members there so i and i i don't i'm not a pokemon user so i don't know enough about it to know how like i guess there was a stop there but i i'm, I'm not sure how a stop would have gotten in that location in, in the first place but maybe could you speak a, a little about if you're wandering around or are there some sort of off limits locations where you have to be careful about where you'd want to go no <laughs> um in that kind of an instance I'm actually spawning all these different uh, Pokestops. They just chose the cemetery. Um, and so that would be an instance where they could go in and request, like um, it was just posted there on the Q&A that Arlington Cemetery had all of their Pokestops removed. I guess they automatically generated a whole bunch. So people were wandering around Arlington Cemetery trying to collect Pokemon. And so they went in there and pulled them all out of there to respect that space. So, um, but as far as where they spawned up when this game first created, it was totally random in a lot of cases. And so there wasn't really anything off limits. So they're trying to moderate that and pull them out of where they don't want them and put them where people do. Yeah. And it's also, you know, you want to be careful. Um, there were some youth, I mean, and this happens with getting really into mobile devices and, and apps. Uh, you know, they, they fell off a cliff or something um, when, and I, I don't know if anyone died or if they were, you know, obviously probably injured, but they weren't paying attention. And so you want to pay attention to your surroundings and, and where you're, you know, we're up, our office is up on a Mesa. And so, you know, I probably wouldn't do any Pokemon uh, activities up here. I would do it down somewhere where they can't fall off a cliff. But, um, but also uh, one thing that we were doing is we were driving around and, uh, and I was driving in case he had the app up and it wouldn't, it tells you in, when you open the app, be aware of your surroundings and then also like not to use it while you're driving. And so it knows how fast you're going when you're driving and it won't let the app work uh, when you're driving. So uh, just to be, be mindful of that. But if you are driving, like say kids around and you're like, you pull off, like be careful, you know, letting them off on a street and, and all that. So it, 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 you can just get really into it and forget and forget that um, what's going on around you. So we had a question about liability issues. Like if, if you place a lure and someone gets injured, you know, going after your lure, is there any liability there? I'm not sure. No. Yeah, I'd be careful. If you're, if you're going to drop a lure, I mean, things happen, um, you know, personal, be personally responsible. But uh, yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't drop a lure, you know, at a graveyard that's haunted or <laughs> um, another, another place that could be potentially dangerous. Plus, another thing is that you won't have any personal information linking you to the lure. I mean, for all they know, it could be anybody who put that up there. So I don't think there could be any like specific liability that they could trace it that you were like creating a liability for other people because it's just part of the game and there's no way they would know you were the one that put that lure up. Yeah, I mean, just to, to remember, you're you're playing a you know in a virtual world, but it's 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 augmented reality, and so you're in a real space. So uh, I, I think early on there was a lot of uh, content like people finding a dead body or in a lake or something, you know, again, it goes back to being responsible and, and uh, kind of being aware of your surroundings. You know, you shouldn't be out at 3 a.m. looking for Pokemon. Even if they're there, it's probably wise not to be out at, uh, at odd hours. So, And uh, just to respond here to uh, Calandria, um, they do have specific locations where specific Pokemon do spawn up. And so, for example, I know that, that there's a library in town where there's a Pokemon called Snorlax that everybody loves. And so all, like, every night, there's a huge group of people that get there, and they have lures set up, and all of them are trying to catch that specific Pokemon. And so that is something else you could do is if you're aware of, like, let's say you have a Pokestop there, and you're aware there's a certain rare Pokemon that pops up there, you could use that as advertising, and that would be also an additional way to attract people to a location. Well, sounds good. I think this has been uh, fun. We've uh, had over 30 people uh, join us at the moment. So um, thanks for everyone in your chats um, and your questions. Um, if you have, if you have uh, again, if you have questions, 
uh, just hit us up on Twitter. Um, we have our, our handles up. And so, um, yeah, I just really appreciate everyone for joining us and uh, we'll keep the conversation going. I can see more and more um, as the game evolves and as we evolve as extension professionals, I can see more ideas, uh, more ways that we can um, share these ideas. And so, um, you know, we welcome anyone who wants to reach out to Jamie or I about, you know, sharing your experience, sharing your case study of how you use reality whether please reach out to us uh, let us know we'd love to publish uh, your content um, your case study on the um, Edu EdTech Learning Network blog uh, we encourage you to join the EdTech Learning Network uh, with eExtension and uh, share your experiences using this a lot of people are just kind of really getting into this um, and there it's we're, we're all just pioneers learning technology together and so this is just a fun way we're lucky that Casey could could join us uh, he's been working with me this summer and, and um, I'm glad to have a resident expert because uh, this has been a huge learning curve for me and uh, and I'm just kind of feeling like I'm I'm uh, just getting just scratching the surface on the possibilities so I uh, think thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we'll hope you have a good day and uh, good luck catching them all thanks everybody bye bye